can we just address the fact you 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 have a little a little bias to seeing uh drake get his ass kicked a little bit bias i love him getting his ass kicked i'm just not a fan of the drake that kendrick mutilated gotcha like what what that person stands for and represents is the exact opposite of what i stand for and represent what do you mean by that now the other day y'all know the pie father he said on a twitter spaces that he passed a baton to push a t and kendrick lamar to finally put the last nail in the coffin for drake now He's back on his podcast today to explain that statement. Let's see what he had to say. And y'all know I need y'all to show some love on this video. Like and subscribe. Let's check it out. We on the spaces. The Drake topic won't die. A Joe Budden fan, clearly a Joe Budden fan, like a music Joe Budden fan, says, hey, Joe, I ain't going to lie. Yo, don't you think that in terms of like the information that was uh, used in the battle that you kind of laid the blueprint for. So I said, you know what? This is gonna sound arrogant and a little narcissistic, but I don't care, fuck it. I'm talking to my people. <laughs> and I said, you know what? I personally do feel like I passed the baton to push, push passed the baton to Kendrick, and now the job is done. End quote. Boy, they clipped that motherfucker up like hotcakes, but without the question. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the clip just starts with, and the headlines say, Joe Button is taking credit for Kendrick's win against Rick. Joe Button says Kendrick couldn't beat Drake without his information. <laughs> it's a mad headline. <laughs> so they cut out the question, and it's me saying, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I do feel like I gave them niggas the baton. Yeah. 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 And he gave. Now, now that we're here on my platform where I can expand, I'm not expounding because I 100% stand in that. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. Push got a little creative. He went. Did the research. Yeah, I don't want it to sound like I passed the baton to push, like push used everything. I said, I don't feel like that. There may have been remnants, but push had another level to go to. And he went there and did it effectively, which is why you passed the baton to him. He adds layers. He passes it to Kendrick, who used, who also used remnants of all of that shit and added his layer. And now the job is done. In no way am I taking credit. I don't want no part to this moment. But as someone that has battled, and as an MC, and as someone that's battle tested, take my word for it. When people are engaging in war, dumb niggas is listening to all the disses that came before it. Mm -hmm. It just happens. That's true. It just happens. So it don't matter if none of the fans heard the shit, the participants heard it, and I can hear the remnants of the foundation laid by me. Sorry. Like, like when Push was putting out the blackface pictures, mm -hmm. And some of the points he was driving was, hey, our culture is not his culture. Kendrick just leaned all the way into that and put on a master class and a execution. PowerPoint presentation and a masterful execution of that point. And he's a bigger star at the end of the day. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that matters. That's, 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 it, it matters. Well, I started it's with amazing. profile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Profile. It's, it starts there. Can we just address the fact you, you, you have a little... A little biased to seeing uh, Drake get his ass kicked a little bit. Bias? I love him getting his ass kicked. All right, that just I just wanted. To, like, Did you think that he was going to run from? No, no, no. Because I feel I like because because people love him cause keep, 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 keep speaking to that as if Joe is just not like not being very aware that that's how it comes across. Like, oh, okay. But the bad part about it, E, is, and I'm glad you said that, is Drake is being used as a shield for what the real conversation is lying underneath, which is culture people versus numbers people. Mm -hmm. it, it's not really about Drake for me. He was just the, the, the person on the cross. 99% of people are Drake fans, mm -hmm. but there's so many different Drakes. Which one are you a fan of? Good point. I'm just nice. not a fan of the Drake that Kendrick mutilated. Mm. Gotcha. Like what, what that person stands for and represents is the exact opposite of what I stand for and represent. Yeah, Kendrick's point was, fuck numbers. 
Nigga, did you ever play football in the street and the pole was the touchdown? The car was the touchdown? Did you have a nickname growing up that your hood gave you? Did you shoot basketballs in crates? Yeah, Kendrick was leaning into that specifically. And I think that that kind of won him the battle and that conversation has layers to it so it grows into something else. But he was just saying, you're not like us. Yeah. But I also feel like the people that have been blessed enough to win tremendously should, should be able to take a loss gracefully. Like us speaking about, uh, us speaking about, hold up for a minute, us speaking about what happened with the music, I don't want it to blur the lines of how I may feel about Drake as a person. He could be a great person. The person, the man that he is, Mm -hmm. I don't know. He could be amazing. I think he's funny. I think he's charming. I think he's witty. But musically, we talking about, it's a different, it's a different ball game. All right. Now, it's so much to get to from that small clip. So I want to start with this. I know some people will look at those statements by Joe Button and say he was being arrogant, but I have to give him credit for being the first one out. And if y'all remember back in the day when Joe was going at Drake, he took a lot of backlash at that time. He was called a clout chaser. He was called corny. You just using Drake to try to stay relevant. Because he was also doing the podcast during that time, too. It wasn't like Joe was just a rapper. He was doing diss tracks towards Drake and then coming into the podcast, talking about it with uh, Rory and Maul. And obviously, it did lead to some good content. It led to some good numbers for the podcast. But I still don't think it was the only reason people were tuning in for the podcast at that time. It's just that Joe was rapping and podcasting at the same time. And even that, when you put it into perspective, was groundbreaking for him to like really be actively rapping and doing a podcast at the same time. How many rappers are doing that now? Only time you see niggas doing that is in the NBA. You see basketball players hooping while they doing the podcast, right? Draymond Green, LeBron James, etc. So I think we do have to give him credit for being the first one to come out the gate and go at Drake. And yes, some of the things that Kendrick and Pusha T talked about were in some of those original Joe Button diss tracks. But like he said, Pusha T got a little more creative with some of the things that Joe was saying. And Kendrick, he leaned all the way into that culture conversation. So I don't mind giving Joe his credit and his explanation on the podcast was reasonable. But yeah, when you chop up that clip it does make him sound you know a little arrogant like he's trying to take some credit from Kendrick but let's get to that culture conversation and I liked his analogy it was like um Kendrick is saying did you play football in the street and shit like that and I would agree as a Drake fan do I think he grew up like most American hood kids playing curveball. Y'all remember when you would take the basketball and you would throw it on the curb and it'll, it'll bounce back to you? I don't think Drake ever played that when he was growing up. And I just think that his his struggle was different. And I do think he did have to struggle in hip-hop when it just came to people taking him seriously. Now, when he first came out the gate, and he was popping, yeah, he was with Wayne. But people forget about MySpace Drake. And during that time, he did have a lot of naysayers. He had a lot of people who didn't pay him much attention because they was like, who is this dude from Degrassi? Who is Jimmy from the wheelchair trying to rap? And I don't think a lot of people really thought that he took it serious. It wasn't until he started 
to kind of get stuff buzzing. This was around the time he was doing a lot of features with Trey Songs that rappers started taking him a little more seriously. And some somehow during that time, I want to say he got the connection with J. Prince Jr. and Lil Wayne. Because I think J. Prince Jr. was the one who introduced him to Wayne, if I'm not mistaken. But I do think he had to kind of struggle to get to that point to be linked up with Lil Wayne, right? But no, I don't think he grew up in that, you know, hood lifestyle. And you can tell his music has never been about that. And I'll I'll give him that. I see a lot of people trying to pin Mark when Drake started to go gangster, when he started to talk that hood stuff. Um I think people kind of link it around the Meek Mill beef or the XX Tentacion passing. I see people saying when X passed away, that's when Drake started to really start talking like he was gangster. But I also want to say this. I'm not giving Drake some type of pass for talking about XX Tentacion when he passed away. But. I will say, I think some people do forget when X was alive, he said some really disrespectful stuff about Drake and his mother. And y'all know, I, I, I don't think, I don't think we can judge somebody on how they handle defending their mother when somebody goes public with millions of fans disrespecting their mama. You know what I mean? Like, some of y'all know, niggas will, will die about their mama, okay? So I, I think that's the part a lot of people forget. But, yeah, do I think it was poor taste to take some shots at XX after he had passed away? Yes, but y'all know some niggas, when you talk about mamas, ain't shit, ain't shit off, off limits. So it's, it, it's very... I think it's a complex situation, but at the end of the day, I think Kendrick did make his point. And uh, like I told y'all, as a Drake fan, I will say, yeah, he he lost that battle. But I think it's a discussion that can be had, and I'm not mad at anybody who comes with their points. And like I said, Joe went out first. Um, he did kind of put a couple of things on the plate for Pusha and Kendrick, but I think Kendrick took it to a whole nother level. And the conversation he started about Drake was, I think, more food for thought than what Pusha and Joe did. So let me know what y'all think about this. Like the video and subscribe. I will see y'all next time. Peace. Hey, nigga, donate. Hit the super chat. Scan the PayPal. Hit the cash app. Thank you. Have a blessed day.